Hey viewers, and welcome back to Let's Play Shadowrun Dragonfall, the Director's Cut. Well, our team needs help. Iger and Glory have both sourced us to missions to help them out, and we're gonna go do that exact thing in just a minute here, viewers. Because we're far en enough along in the game now, we can get some better cyberware, and I think maybe a better outfit too. No, no, I don't really want those. Now, depending on how exacting you are with your combat, I have in the past actually bought a second rifle. But there's such a difference between 12 and 15 damage, and I've got the grenade launcher. Don't think I'm going to bother this time. That way you don't have to waste the one point reloading, which doesn't sound like much, but it adds up. There's one very specific piece of cyberware I want to snag from a good Dr. Escabel. There it is. No, it's not it. Here we go. State-of-the-art alpha cyberware with magnification enhancement. 6% to hit. That takes us down to 5 essence. You can see all the big costs and stuff. It's not bioware, like 1.5. 2. Oh, this one's pretty good. Plus 1 movement. Lasts 3 rounds and you dodge the first attack. I believe that Lucky Strike had that one. So more quickness, but again, two essence. Goes pretty fast, viewers. So we're going to go with something a little bit different here. Muscle augmentation in the arms. Still costs an essence, but gives us one quickness and one strength. It's pretty much one of your best choices for the arms. There we go. Takes us down to four essence. But we're still pretty human. And again, not that it really matters in the game. The only thing that it would affect is spells. And, well, don't use a lot of those in this particular Street Samurai. The only thing I can do is spend Karma. So, look, we have 8 Quickness, which is pretty darn good. But if we want to improve our abilities, you know, so we can't take that 8 level of ranged combat, even though we've got the 8 Quickness, because your core abilities here only count your actual stats and improvements. Which will... Well, I won't say it come in handy, but it definitely means something later, so we're still going to go for that extra quickness there. Saving up for 8 ranged combat viewers, because that's on my list of things to do. Now, you said your contact was down here. Ah, here we go. No, Iger's already there. Vanek. This dwarf has a distinctly Eurasian appearance. He peers up at Iger through almond-shaped eyes. The rest of his broad face is dominated by strong, slavic features. He nods to himself and puts down his mug of soy calf. On the edge of the table, a plate of day-old pie cools in a haze of cigarette smoke. Hoy, Iger. Been a long time. He taps the thumb on the rim of his coffee cup. Keeping busy. You could say that. Renarin, this is Bannock. He's a friend. The dwarf scoffs. Don't know if I'd go that far. Nothing personal, you understand. If I were to start keeping friends, I might call you one. But in my experience, friendship and obligation go hand in hand. A solitary life is cleaner. Iger smiles. Professional acquaintance, then. The dwarf nods. Better. Now, let's get down to business, shall we? Let's. We need intel on the engineer. Where he's been staying, who he's been working for, how long he's been in Shatnest. Whatever you've got, we want it. Bannock spears a hunk of pie with his fork, crams it into his mouth, and starts to chew. A moment later, he shrugs. I've had worse. And of course, I'll give you all that I can. But I don't know much. I can point you in the right direction. That's all. Just tell us what you can. We'll handle the heavy lifting. The dwarf nods, then fumbles in his jacket pocket for something. A moment later, he produces a weathered paper map and spreads it on the table. All right. What you're looking for is at the northwest quadrant of Shatnest. This is gang territory. All of it. These days, the whole Kiez is being held by Rambok. I've had a run-in with Rambok before. We can handle them. Wouldn't be so sure about that if I were you. The guy that filled the power vacuum when their last leader bit it is a real piece of work. But hey, maybe you're right. I hope so, for your sake. He stabs a meaty finger down on the faded silhouette of a building. This warehouse, right here, is Rambok HQ. And that's where the engineer is staying. The Rambok's, I'm pretty sure, were the guys that were on the bridge way back with Humanus. They tried to intercept our cargo. 
Wonderful. Iger exhales heavily. If he's staying there, he must be arranging some sort of deal with them. That'd be the safe bet. And they haven't pulled their guns on him yet, so it's fair to assume that negotiations are going well. I'm sure that I don't have to tell you this, but the last thing we need is an alliance between some foreign syndicated Rambok. No good could come of that. Can't argue with that. Now, I can't tell you who the engineer is working for. You'll have to ask him about that yourself. What I can do is make it easier for you to have a sit-down with him. Bennick reaches under the table and brings up a canvas bag. He places it in front of you and pushes it forward. Don't open that in here. There are people in this room who would kill you for what's in that bag. Shrug. I kill him first. Or, you gonna tell us what it is, or do we have to guess? He lowers his voice to a soft whisper. You have to lean in to hear him clearly. What you're gonna find in there is a gadget about the size of a water pistol. It has a rubberized grip and a hair trigger, and it's good for one shot. Is it a stun gun? No. He pauses for a moment, playing with his fork. Well, not really. For your purposes, you might as well think of it as one, though. The object in question is a cyberware deactivator. I had it shipped here, at great personal expense, from a supermax prison in the UCAS. He traces a twirl in the air with a fork. The warden owed me a favor. Iger whistles appreciatively. Whew. Very nice, Bannock. That should make this easy. Not easy. Possible. I wouldn't be giving it to you if the job could be done without it. The engineer is rocking a delta-grade move-by-wire system. Unless you can shut it down, there's no way in hell you're going to catch him. And if we do shut it down, he'll be forced into a state of permanent seizure. Bennick shrugs. Only until he gets the thing up and running. Deactivated isn't the same as broken. The dwarf shovels another heaping forkful of pie into his mouth. He chews thoughtfully. Until then, his life will be a living hell. But I can think of worse things to use as a bargaining chip. Remember, you need to know who he works for. The more you can take out of his take him out of his comfort zone, the better. Let's go hunting, Iger. Iger nods. Thanks, Bannock. Let you know how things work out. Don't bother. I'll be watching. Cyberware deactivator, custom-made weapon, usable only at extremely close range. Key to a specific target cyberware codes. Uh, let's trade out the crappy Bunoma combat kit. All right. So back to a place we've been to to fight guys we've already fought. But this time, there's a psychopath. So that's always fun, right, viewers? On the bright side, I've got some decent Bioware and cybernetics of my own now. So, call Iger and travel to the Chateau Nest to locate the engineer. You cannot take Iger, that's hilarious. Whoa. Whoa, Iger, you went and got yourself wired reflexes. Holy crap. Basic cyber arm and Aztec cyber leg. Wow, Iger, you're rocking some serious stuff now. I mean, I'm not doing too bad myself, but... I'm always a mixed bag when you can't really control all the upgrades of your characters, but it's also interesting because getting cyberware is a pretty personal thing. The engineer, Shadow Nest, the keys next door to the cruise bazaar, and an object lesson in anarchy gone wrong. Violent gangs rule the streets here, trading territory to the roar of gunfire. The streets are a war zone. As dangerous as Shadow Nest already is, it could be worse. The gangs are vicious, but disorganized. They pose little risk to their neighbors. With little more than a makeshift barricade and a few volunteers, the cruise bazaar has successfully insulated itself from the chaos of its neighboring keys. The engineer could change all of that. He has to be stopped, and the F-State as a whole needs to be alerted to what his clients are trying to do. It's up to you and Iger to make sure that happens. Well, I think I've got everything I'm going to, well, really need, so... Now, can I make you take anything else? Can I give you some stuff? I can, okay. We don't have a healer, so you know what? Okay, you come automatically with that stuff. I can't get rid of it. That's fine. Take those med kits. You might need them. As you near the edge of the cruise bazaar, the familiar piss and asphalt stents of Chateauness crawls into your nostrils and sticks in the back of your throat. The dilapidated husks of burnt-out buildings loom above you, 
giving the place an air of menace. I was hoping I'd put this place behind me after the Humanus run. Yeah, I'm with you there. Iger wrinkles her nose. The funny thing is, a syndicate presence might actually help Shadow Nest, in the short term at least. They clean up the streets, if nothing else. <laughs> Don't tell me you're changing your mind. Not for a second. A syndicate, any syndicate, and Shatinesk would be a disaster for the Cruise Bazaar. Let the people on the other side of the gate deal with their own problems. I won't allow my home to be endangered for their sake. Oh, there's the food cart. And here's the dwarf we talked to the last time. You again. Well, you ignored my warning last time and you ain't dead, so I guess you can handle yourself. He sighs. Let him through, Sergei. He nods at you. Be careful out there. What am I not? Oh, except that time that's open. Here we go. Cardboard box. Uh-oh. Yeah, because this is where we met the guys for the Humanus Escort. The cardboard box is filled with makeshift bedding. A homeless person must be using it to keep warm at night. Search the box. You find a basic, uncertified cred stick beneath the pillow. Nah, not gonna rob a homeless guy. Believe it. Oh, nice big hole there in the road. We gonna get plenty of money coming down the pipe here from these next few jobs, viewers. I don't need the 100 or 50 or so million that's gonna be on that thing. This, though, that's in a pile of boxes. Bliss. Yep, send it to the stash. This looks like a place for a dust-up. No? It's over here, I wonder. Nothing to say? Wow, there's a lot of territory to explore here, viewers. Motorcycle. The engine's still warm. Colors in the tail clearly mark it as Rambach property. Must be getting close. How about this door panel here? The warehouse door is a windowless slab of reinforced des density plast. A keypad system sits on one side. I really got to play this game through again with a Decker, viewers. Any ideas, Iger? Looks secure. She examines the heavy door, scowling. I might be able to blast it open with a controlled explosive. But that spooky one inside. <laughs> know where we can get a controlled explosive around here? Afraid not. I used to know a weapons dealer out here, but he wound up dead in an alley. Two shots, back of the head. Very professional. She eyes the door. A grenade alone won't bring this down. If we could find a propane tank, I could rip some rig something up with that. Well, or we could go find whoever knows the code and shoot it out of them. Lady. Man. Now right, let's head back here first. Hey, propane tank. <laughs> Sorry, random people. Best not to get too close to those guys. Oh, yeah? Well, it's your show, Iger. What? What do you want? I'm new in town. What's hot around here? Nothing. Not a goddamn thing. All there is to do is shat and is get your arse beat by gangs now you decide to join one. Why don't you move? They're safer Kiev's not far from here. That takes money. Rent ain't free, unless you're suggesting I start living on the street. At least here I have a roof over my head. Now, in that case, got any information for me? Yeah, I bet. I've seen your type before. You're probably looking for someone, or looking for something that's been stolen. Either way, the Rambach won't be happy about you sticking your nose into Shat Nest. Alright, alright. I'm leaving. You know what? That's fine. I'll pick up my lesson where I left off with him last time. Lady, I got pots and pans. You need pots and pans? No, but some info would be nice. You see any new friends of the Rambach show up lately? Yeah, sure I have. What's it to you? The woman eyes you up and down, clearly waiting for you to make an offer. And over 50 million. Just trying to help out the neighborhood. 
He leans in for a whisper. They're just down the street in the warehouse with the grass in front. New guy showed up a few days ago. Seems like a bigwig. They've been moving product through there ever since. I've seen it. It's locked up tight. Sure. I could help you out there for a price. I, c I can deal with that. 500. No less. Gotta make a living, you know. Uh, you know what? I'll figure it out on my own. And I'm gonna figure it out with a giant freaking explosive. Or I could buy her off and then sneak in. Eh, forget it. Let's do this. Make a bomb. Alright, fearless leader. There isn't anything subtle about what we're gonna do, and I mean that. They're gonna hear this explosion back in the cruise bazaar. That means that when this thing goes off, it's go time. We need to get to the engineer before he slips away. If we lose him, we won't find him again. Uh, let's try something else. Should I strong arm this lady of yours? I mean, 500 new yen. That's a lot of money. And again, she is piss poor. Uh, actually, let's see what kind of products they're moving in the warehouse. What kind of product? The cost you extra, sweetie, isn't important. And over 25 million. Drugs, guns, the usual. Seems like more drugs than guns lately, so maybe things will pick up around here. Huh. Oh, crap. Now I can't ask her about the code. Whoops. Okay, well, let's see if I go back here. Maybe I'll get the chance to ask again. That's annoying that they... And put a code. Five 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 five. And I think that'd work. I'm gonna go loud. Maybe I should go piss off those people that Iger told me not to talk to. Ah nah. It's probably a bad plan. Alright, well, she's not gonna give me the code. I had my chance and I blew it, viewers, so. Let's give these guys a bomb. In there, that's our man. So that's how I get in there, huh? Must be. Okay, well, let's, uh, beat feet. You, meanwhile, activate your wire reflexes so you do not get shot. And enjoy that extra movement. Even unlocked, not this time. Ah, oh, it's the wide reflexes. Must get for dodging that thing. New objective, use the cyberware guy thing on the engineer. Okay, well, I can move one square here. There's definitely a back door, so. Shot that ignores armor completely. Increases accuracy by 35%. What do you got on that thing? Perfect. Knocked it all his AP, which means he lost control over his summon. I you need to open that door for me, please. was a miss. Iger, get that door for me too, would you? Sorry, Iger, but you're the one that said we really had to run it, so... Can 
you cripple him, maybe? Minus one AP. Okay, that's accuracy. Nope. Definitely slowed him down. Okay, you guys are still out. So let's move here. Tase him. Clear the areas of Rambot gangers. You have throwing up high enough that you can now throw these with only one turn. For medkits. <laughs> These are all on fire now. But man, running after that guy. That definitely hurt me. Oh, jeez. I don't really have anything else I can use. It's helpful, do I? I'm really glad I took that bonus. Actually, you know what? Let's. Should we ride reflexes, viewers? I'm thinking we should ride reflexes. <laughs> He's like, hmm, maybe running next to the shot to the crazy troll with a shotgun was a bad plan. <laughs> Ow. Hey, shouldn't you have dodged that? <laughs> Oof. Okay, won't lie, that really hurt. guys left. Oh. Gotta reload, I guess. I can deal with that mage. That sounded like she was dealt with. What is it, like five on two? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's like five on two or something like that. Dodged. Flanked. Oh, yeah, you gotta move. Well, you gotta put it on with trauma kit. You don't need to move. Nice. I right, would you ruin this son of a. Thank you. The problem trying to kill a troll is that it's a troll. Oh! You think so. Iger, would you actually get out of the way? I don't want you to get hit by this auto fire I'm going to throw down at him. Probably some overkill there, actually. Are 
Are you going in and out of that place? <coughs> Alright, fine. We'll fall back. Come and get us. Just don't want to stand near that guy in case he gets grenaded. There you are. It's a pretty nice cover you got there. <coughs> His accuracy by 35%? Still a terrible chance to hit. <laughs> okay. Agar, you got this? Okay, I just want to punch him in the face. This hits will be hilarious. <laughs> Fantastic. And Iger goes... Help me drag this guy back to the warehouse. We're going to find out what he knows. The engineer lies splayed out on the ground, his body trembling violently. Iger shoves a bottle up his nose and squeezes. The engineer shuttles, shudders violently, then the trembling begins to subside. She glances at you, an aerosol BZD, to help treat the seizures. Vanek was kind enough to include it in his goodie bag. It won't last long, but it should give Yuli here enough muscular control to answer a few questions. The engineer's voice comes out in a trembling stutter. F -f fuck you, troll. Iger raises an eyebrow. See? He's talking already. The engineer's eyes burn with hate. Beads of sweat dot his brow as he struggles to control the tremors that rack his body. He takes a deep breath, holds it, and releases it slowly. The trembling begins to subside. We've got some questions for you. You better have answers. Slowly, the orc's eyes shift from Iger to you. I know, troll bitch. We have history. But you, you're a stranger to me. Are you sure that you have the stomach for this stranger? No, not many do. I have a stomach for all sorts of things. You know what? I'm just going to hit him. The wind explodes out of the orc's lungs as your fist slams into his belly. His breath stinks of harissa and garlic. After a few panicked seconds, he manages to gasp out a word. Bastard! Hit him again. Language. You slam your fist into the bridge of the engineer's nose. His head whips back, then comes forward again. A trickle of blood leaks from one of his nostrils. He looks you up and down and gives a slight nod. You're not weak, human. I'll give you that much. His voice sounds stronger now. The stutter that marred his speech has almost completely faded away. Not strong, but not weak. A free piece of advice from me to you. Kill me here and now. Do it quick. He fixes his gaze on you. Because if I ever get off this floor, you're dead. First I'll do you, then I'll do your bitch friend. And it will be messy. I think I'll step back and let the she-troll respond to that. Iger steps forward, a cruel smile on her face. You're going to want to start talking, Yuli. I promise you that. You can start by telling us whose payroll you're on. She grabs a fistful of the orc's hair and lifts his head. Her face is inches from his. Tell us who sent you to Shatternest. There is a long pause. Eventually, the engineer looks away. All right. You want to know so badly, I'll tell you. Tanamouse sent me here. They want to use Shatternest as a base of operations in Berlin. My point of contact is a ghoul named Beetle. He leans forward and locks eyes with Iger. There. You've got your intel. Now set me free or kill me. Yuli. Iger leans back, shaking her head. You wouldn't roll over on an employer this easily. Your rep tells me that much. He raises an eyebrow and a look of mock astonishment. No? No. Iger's right. You're jerking us around. You wanted a name? I gave you a name. Want more? I can give you those too. I can name you a hundred clients who'd love a piece of shat nest. How do you intend to determine who really sent me? I've got a couple of ideas. The engineer smirks. You can try getting beating the truth out of me. You can try cutting on me. Get creative with the pliers if you like. Every time you hurt me, I'll give you a different name. Torture me or don't. We're all in the same way. I'll be dead. You'll know nothing for certain. And my clients will move ahead on schedule. Well, help us out then. If you're already dead, why care about being a snitch? He snorts. That won't give the she-troll the satisfaction. She wants it. That's why she won't get it. Iger's hands bunch into fists. She's still smiling, but you can feel the heat of her hatred behind her eyes. 
If you don't start telling me what I want to hear in the next 30 seconds, this is going to get messy. I will say nothing. You know, Iger, he takes his time pronouncing the name, savors it. I'd like to tell you a story. We share so much history, you and I. Iger says nothing but her eyes narrow. The engineer continues, his grin broadening. This, this is a funny story. It's a story about your time in the KSK. A story about futility. I can tell you about the many lives you've touched. Now the syndicates touch them again afterward. Would you like that? There is a long pause. Eventually, Iger turns to face you. Renarin, do me a favor. Sweep the building for intel. Anything that we might have missed on the way in. I don't know if that's a great idea, Iger. It's necessary, Renarin. She shoots a disgusted glance at your captive. And I won't let this twisted little prick chase me out of the room. He can tell me whatever story he likes. Feels like this guy's getting under your skin. And we can't afford to kill him before we get to the truth. Don't worry about me. Everything's all right on my end. But this asshole is right about one thing. We aren't going to solve this on his word alone. Greed? But well, I don't think that we can beat the answer out of him either. No. No, of course not. She sighs. I'm sure that he'd eventually spill the name we're looking for. But it'd be buried in so much white noise that it'd be impossible to filter out. You can find some corroborating evidence, though. That might help us wade through the river of bullshit he's spewing. I can't tell you what to look for, but he was doing business with Rambach in this building. There must be something in here that can tell us who he represents. Alright, Iger, but remember, we need this son of a bitch alive right now. No torture. Yeah. She turns back to the engineer. I'm good, but be quick. Okay, well, barrels. Chemical storage barrels. Oh, a light jostle shows that they're empty. Courier drone. It looks melted. The cargo container is empty. Here we go. This generic courier drone has been snapped together out of prefab parts from a dozen different manufacturers. It's a cheap, utilitarian thing. Remarkable only in that it is so incredibly plain. A half-bright teenager could cobble something like this together in an afternoon. The drone sits in a charging cradle, its turbofan unpowered. A cheerful green light blinks on its front panel to remind you that it's still active. You can see the silhouette of something under the flimsy plastic dome of the drone's cargo compartment. Whatever this thing was here to deliver, it's still carrying it. Well, let's pop the lid on it. You depress the catch in the container's plastic lid. Rather than swinging open, the lid slides back to reveal a touchpad. Looks as though this thing is password locked. Yeah, drone control and rigging next time I play, viewers. Intelligence 2, examine the drone more closely. Facing a closer look, you notice something. There is a set of electrical contact plates lining the tip of the drone's cargo compartment. It's a fair bet that this thing is outfitted with an anti-tampering system of some kind. So we're not going to smash the plastic. Let's just step away for now. See what's in here, maybe? Corpse, okay. The broken body of a human man lies on the floor. His face is a mess of fresh cuts and congealing blood, and his head is oddly deformed. Despite his wounds, his mouth is twisted into a macabre smile. Inspect the body. Judging by the shape of the ganger's head, you'd guess that his skull has been fractured in at least three places. The center of his forehead is particularly gruesome. It looks soft, as though the skin were stretched like a tent between shards of broken bone. Looking up, you can see a great smear of gore on the door of the room that you found him in. The implications are clear. This man bashed his own head in trying to get out, and he did it with a smile on his face. His hands are badly broken, too. You've seen these sorts of injuries after bare-knuckle fistfights, but never anything this severe. This man punched something hard, and went on punching until his hands were reduced to useless slabs of meat. Well, yeah, so Rigger, Decker, and then... Biomedic. Ledger. There's a small ledger lying on this crate that I can apparently touch from way over here because I have telekinesis. The cover is cheap leatherette, and the paper is tissue-thin newsprint. Leaf through. The pages are filled to overflowing with handwritten text. You don't recognize the language, but judging by the accent marks, you'd guess it's a Scandinavian tongue. While you can't read it, the arrangement of the text tells you that the ledger is primarily being used as an address book. Now we'll pocket it and move on. This forks lift's tires are flat. Looks like it hasn't been used in years. 
Well, sorry, Iger, but that's just about everything I can get out of here. Can't talk to you, so I guess we talk to Yuli. As you approach, you can see that the engineer's chest is sheeted with blood. Most of it seems to, be, he seems to be streaming from his nose, which has been crushed into a wad of bloody meat. Iger turns to face you. Her bunched fists are dripping red. Find anything? She speaks to you through clenched teeth. Her voice sounds strange, and her cheeks are flushed. I thought you said that we weren't going to resort to torture. This isn't torture. It's justice. He knew half of what this bastard has done. If you'd heard the things that he just told me, you'd do the same. Maybe so, but you're on edge, and I need you calm. Beating on him isn't helping. She pauses and turns away. Just tell me what you found. Yes, please. The engineer's voice is thick and wet. He smiles through a set of gore-streaked teeth. Enlighten us. I found this ledger. I don't recognize the language, but it looks Scandinavian. Iger looks, sleeps through the journal, quickly flipping the soy calf-stained pages. Norwegian, maybe. I'm thinking this is written in Bokmal. She frowns. I can't read it, but it looks like a shipping manifest. Yeah, something like that. There are a lot of addresses in here. She riffles through the pages, flipping the cheap paper with her thumbnail. Looks like addresses all the way through. Some are annotated, but I can't see any names. Two-thirds of the way through the book, she stops short. Find something interesting? Wordlessly, she turns the journal around. At the top of the page, written in a different hand, is a single word. It's written in English, but you can understand it all the same. Wednesday. She nods. Yeah, not particularly helpful without a full date, but I guess it's something. Of course, Wednesday might not refer to a day of the week at all. It could be a code for something. Taken out of context like this, it's impossible to say. So what do you make of this? This should be good. Iger ignores him. Her gaze remains fixed on the book. It might be nothing. Or it could mean that he's back in bed with the Lobachevsky Syndicate. The engineer holds his silence. Say nothing. Did you find anything else? We need to be sure about this before moving forward. I found a body in the other room. From the looks of him, he tried to, using his own head to beat down a steel reinforced door. Interesting, but not unusual in these parts. There are all kinds of drugs that can make a person act that way. Most of them are hard to get in a place like Shatternest. Found anything else? I must have missed something. I'll keep searching. Wonder if I can enter uh, Wednesday on this drone control. Enter a password. Ha! The plastic leg of the cargo container pops open with a click. Inside, you find what appears to be a homemade SimSense chip. It sits securely in a custom-made plastic bracket. Take the chip. You pop the chip out of the bracket and pocket it. A few seconds later, an angry hissing sound comes from somewhere deep within the drone. Step back. Whoa! As you step back from the drone, the hissing sound grows into a roar. Bright white sparks spit out from the drone's melting chassis and streak across the room. You've seen this kind of reaction before. Thermite. Whoever built this drone must have wired it with a self-destruct device. Within seconds, all that's left of the little drone is a molten wreck on the charging cradle. Foul-smelling smoke pours from the remains. You steal another glance at the chip you recovered, and then turn away. Okay, well that's more. One of the guys a SimSense slot. Nope. Can't check and see if he's got a data jack. You're back. Find anything else? There are a pair of courier drones in the other room. No markings. They look custom built. One of them had been slagged, but the other had this chip in its storage compartment. When you produce the chip, the engineer's eyes widen slightly. He turns his head and coughs rack his body. Interesting. This means something to you, Yuli? Iger takes the chip from you and holds it to the light. No identifying markings. I've seen enough BTLs in my time to know and when I see it, but this is different. It's been modified somehow. Go ahead and slot it, bitch. I'll take you on the ride of your life. Iger raises an eyebrow. Smack him, will you? I'm busy. Eh, hit him. Your fist connects with the ruined meat of the engineer's known nose. He coughs, chokes on his own blood, and then spits a wad of it onto your chest. You don't know what you're holding, slag. He spits the words out like venom. His eyes are locked on the chip in Iger's hand. Slowly, he licks his lips. You don't deserve to touch that chip. I thought this guy was a professional. Huh. <laughs> I know his rep. I know he's much too careful to get himself addicted to stims. 
Sorry, Sims. She glances at the engineer. His eyes are locked on the chip. These things have him hooked this badly. It must be even more addictive than standard BTLs. That's a frightening thought. You're telling me. The last thing we need is more snim junkies on our streets. She turns to the face of the engineer. You got anything to add to that, Yuli? You have no idea how wrong you are about all of this. He struggles to rise from the floor, but his muscles refuse to cooperate. Finally, he gives up with a scowl. If I could move my arms, I'd take that ship from you and show you what it does. I'm sure that you would. She glances over her shoulder at you. Good find, Renarin. You struck a nerve. Any other thoughts? Yeah, actually. I think I might know where the other ship went. Remember that body I found in the other room? Yeah. Yeah, good thought. Go check it out, but be quick. I don't know how long it'll be before we have company here. I'm on it. The plot thickens, viewers. The ruined body lies crumpled on the floor. Search for the missing ship. Peeling back a patch of matted hair, you find something that a casual viewer would have missed. The man had a chip jack. It's a cheap model, sufficient for loading SimSense chips and BTLs, but little else. It doesn't take much effort for you to pry it open. Inside the chip jack, you find a glob of plastic. Looks as though whatever this guy was running melted down sometime after he slaughtered it. A chip jack like this couldn't generate enough heat to destroy a SimSense chip. The only logical conclusion is that the chip itself was wired to melt down after use. Take the burned out chip and leave. Well, that's kind of bad news. Probably would do a number on your head if it was in there when it melted down. The engineer's eyes remain locked on the chip. His face has gone pallid white and his shirt is drenched with sweat. His eyes bulge and his breathing is heavy. Iger glances up from your manic captive and looks you in the eye. Find what we're looking for? Yeah. I pried his chip jack open and found a blob of melted plactus inside. It's still warm to the touch. Iger examines the remnants of the chip in your fingers. I've heard of these things before. Single-use sims designed to self-destruct after they're slotted. Keeps the customers from reusing the same BTL over and over again. I'd say that you found our missing chip. Yeah, I agree. But the gang who slotted this wasn't blissed out like a normal slim junkie. It was almost the opposite. He looked wild, like a madman. Madman. The engineer lets out a chuckle. It's a hoarse barking sound. You don't know a damn thing. I know that we have something you want. Something you're willing to die for. Death is nothing. Nothing. If you've seen what I've seen, you know for yourselves. The chip. It opens your eyes. Slot one, and you become a god. Iger stares at him, her expression flat. The engineer sneers. I, too, was a skeptic. Then the wolf caught me, and the raven opened my eyes. And now, at last, I can see. Suddenly, he lurches forward. Every muscle in his body goes tight, and the cords stand out on his neck. Give me that chip. It was promised to me. I need it. Tell us who you're working for, and it's all yours. The engineer spits out a mouthful of blood. It hits the tile floor with a sickening splat. He grinds his teeth, then snarls out a single word. Winter night. There is a moment of silence. Finally, Iger speaks. Never heard of them. Of course you haven't, bitch. If you'd had, they'd already be dead. They don't leave loose ends. His body begins to tremble. It looks like the drugs are wearing off. Th they have the money, she troll. But money and influence enough to put the syndicates to shame. And even I cannot say how much, but I do know that what I've seen is just the tip of the spear. All right, let's say you're telling the truth and some sort of secret society is behind this. What do they want with Shatnest? They don't tell me these things. The hall I know is that they would want to store things here. Crates, boxes, shipped in from all over. No cargo inspections, no t traces back to them. What are they shipping in? Weapons, drugs, more of these BTLs? He eyes her incredulously. You think I asked them? It's not my place to know. All th that I know is that I was promised to me to give me the ship. His voice comes out in a shivering screech. You promised. He promised the ship. Iger smiles at the engineer. Slowly, she pulls a knife from her belt. Its serrated edge glints in the night. I, on the other hand, didn't offer you a goddamn thing. Well, she's got you there. Iger leans in to look the engineer in the eye. She grins. Goodbye, Yuli. She plunges her blade into his throat. He lets out a startled gurgling sound, thrashes, and dies. So, back to the cruise bazaar? Well, first we search his body. Who knows? Maybe he has some additional evidence on him. Or in him. Could be that he has headwear storage. We won't know until we go digging. All right, let's get this over with. Time passes. The job is long and unpleasant, but eventually you find something. A 
hidden storage compartment to one of the engineer's cyber arms. Deactivated as his cyberware is, it takes some prying to get it open. But Iger leans in and puts some muscle into it. With a metallic snapping sound, the compartment yawns open. Iger reaches in and pulls out a cylindrical object of the size of a beer can. She inspects it, and a smile creeps across her face. Does that mean something to you? Yeah, actually. It's a pulse grenade. The last I heard, the Russian military were developing them as crowd dispersal devices. But that was years ago. Looks like Yuli kept a memento of his time in the Spetsnaz. She examines the grenade with a critical eye. Looks like typical Russian engineering. Clunky, but functional. If I took this thing apart, I bet that I could figure out how they made it. Anything else in there? She dips her hand into the suit compartment one more time. No, not that I can... Without warning, the engineer's cyber arms begin to twitch. His body bucks convulsively while his dead eyes stare straight ahead. Iger snatches her hand back and steps backward. What the heck? The engineer's body surges forward, a violent convulsive motion. His eyes bulge out of his skull. Then, his chest evaporates in a spray of light. As you watch, the chemical fire that rages from the engineer's body blackens his flesh and spits sparks across the room. It's the same reaction that you saw when the drone went up. A thermite reaction. His employers. Winter night. They must have implanted that thing in him. Yeah, must have. I'm willing to bet that if we hadn't used the cyberware deactivator on him, he'd have gone up before we had the chance to spill any names. If you're looking for further proof, I think that was it. Yeah, looks that way. Let's go. People need to know about this. Ooh. Well, the engineer is definitely not going to escape, viewers. Pretty much guarantee that. And we've searched this place top to bottom, so let's head to the cruise bazaar. So I guess much like with the black box that we got for Blitz, we get pulse grenades from Iger. The cruise bazaar. Insulated from the rest of Berlin, an island of hope and a swamp of crime, chaos, and misery. Your home and the former home of Monica Schaefer. Its uneven streets and familiar faces are a welcome sight. I guess we get that every time we do successfully a, uh, a side quest, so to speak. Two more karma. Should probably have a chat with Iger. Actually, let's see how Blitz is doing, too. Any thoughts about that last run? Nope. Okay. I love the easy answers. Oh, right, we have that DVD to look through as well. Hopefully I'll remember next time, viewers. Dietrich. Any thoughts on that last run? Nope. How about Alexander? He's adjusting. Iger, you gotta have something to say. I welcomes you with a nod. Run, Aaron, what can I do for you? We should talk about what happened with the engineer. She nods. Agreed. I'm ready to go over it if you are. So, the engineer was working for a secret society. Wasn't expecting that. Neither was I. She frowns. A part of me is still having trouble believing it, but it's true. Yuli wasn't lying. I could see it in his eyes. When I left that room to search for clues, the engineer told you something. Something that pushed you over the edge. Her eyes narrow. The son of a bitch said a lot of things. What of it? He knew that we needed him, but you beat him badly. I'm worried about that lapse of control. You don't need to be. There's nothing wrong with my self-control. I made a choice to unload on Yuli because he was a murderous asshole. I knew how much pressure to apply, which bones to break, and which ones to leave alone. And I did all of those things. But why? What did he tell you to push you to that point? It takes her a long time to respond. When she does, her voice carries a tone of resignation. You really want to know? All right, fine. I'll tell you. He told me about a bunch of Polish towns that my unit swept for syndicate activity. He told me how the mob poured back right in after we left, and what they did to the people who accepted our help. He told me about the beatings, the rapes, the killing rooms, and the torture, and worse. He relished in describing all of it, the relentless, hideous barbarism of it all all meant to teach some sort of lesson. I think that's the cruelest part of this entire story. Those people, they didn't need a lesson in how terrible life could be. They'd live with that every day. Yuli seemed to find all of this hilarious. Yeah, I know that he was pushing my buttons on purpose. And yeah, I know that he was trying to make me lose control. But the hell with it. He deserved a good beating. 
Yuli didn't pull any punches, so I didn't pull any punches. And if you have a problem with that, you can go and get fucked. My problem isn't with Yuli getting punished, it's with the fact that you let him play you. Maybe. But I can't ignore the possibility that he wasn't playing me. That these things did happen. She grits her teeth. That'd be a bitter pill to swallow, Renarin. If I leave things where they stand, there'll always be some hope that he was lying. But if I dig into this and find out he was telling the truth, if I find out that none of what we did meant anything... You can't just leave this... a question mark. I know you, Iger. You're too strong to run from the truth. I'm not running from anything, fearless leader. I'm going to look into this wherever it leads me. She looks you in the eye, but I'm not going to do it today. Putting this off isn't going to make it any easier. We have a situation to deal with, remember? Beauclair and the Firewing? Stopping the Engineer was worth doing. It was a distraction from our mission, but these things happen. On the other hand, this... this personal history bullshit. I can wait. Now let's change tack. Is there anything else from the run that you'd like to go over? She folds her arms across her chest. If you have any thoughts, I'd like to hear them. You said that you thought you could reverse engineer that pulse grenade that you pulled from the Engineer. Any luck with that? Yeah, actually. It wasn't too difficult to pull the thing apart and see what made it tick. She smiles. Making one of my own was a different story, but I got it in the end. She reaches into her desk and grabs a cylindrical object. Gently, she lifts it up and hands it to you. Meet the newest addition to my arsenal. I call it the Voltaic Grenade. It's based on the same principles as the Russian Pulse Grenade, but with a few tweaks of my own. Nice. You said these things were designed for crowd control. Originally, yeah. Mine has a lot more bite, though. I bumped up the amperage quite a bit. When this thing goes off, it'll both shut down the nervous system and cook the organs of anyone in its blast radius. Hand back the grenade. Sounds nasty. She nods and tucks the weapon back into her desk. It is. You wouldn't want to be on the wrong end of one of these. For now, I've only managed to make one voltaic grenade. They aren't the easiest things in the world to manufacture, or the cheapest. She nods thoughtfully. But I should be able to scrounge up enough raw materials to put a new one together between each run. Sounds good to me. Can we talk about something else? I don't have anywhere to be. If you have questions, ask away. Have you been able to do any digging on Winter Night? No. There just isn't much reliable information out there. Whoever these guys are, they're very good at information control. None of my contacts could find anything but rumor and conjecture. Most of that is too crazy to even consider. How crazy are we talking here? Completely insane? Stories about magical nukes and the end of the world? Fenris shamans? Ragnarok? That kind of thing? She shakes her head. Like I said, nuts. A lot of crazy things going on in this world. That doesn't mean they're not real. She nods slowly. Yes, there are, and no, it doesn't. But this, this is just too far up for me to accept. It's far more likely that they release these stories themselves to throw people off whatever they're really doing. Anyway, we stopped in Cold and Shatnest. Whatever their business is, whatever was going to be in those crates that the engineer was having shipped there, it isn't our problem anymore. The cruise bazaar is safe. On that front, at least. No, it isn't our problem, and we've got you to thank for that. And you, don't downplay what you did back there. Anyway, we shouldn't let it go to our heads. We still have a dragon to worry about. That's all, Iger. Thanks for the talk. Thank you, fearless leader, both for the chat and for the assist on the run. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Any thoughts about the last run? Nothing we haven't talked about. All right, how about Glory? Glory, what's up? No, right, we've got that other job to do. Well, viewers, I think since we don't get any money from that run, did we? No, still so poor. And not quite enough karma to upgrade our ranged combat just yet. So for now, we're going to call it there. And when we come back, viewers, time to help Glory in Let's Play Shadowrun Dragonfall, the Director's Cut. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you then.